It's amazing the impact high heels have on people, men and women. And there's nothing like seeing a, a girl in full flight down the street, clitter, clatter, clitter, clatter. With high heels, I mean, that's just music to my ears. Didn't know what time it was, the lights were low, oh, oh. I leaned back on my radio, oh, oh. Some cat was laying down some rock and roll, not a soul he said. Then the loud sound... <laughs> I'm making these little babies. Show me she wears. Here she wears, look, here's my wares. Oh, that's ridiculous. Isn't that crazy? That's so yeah, cute, that's dinky. So cute, yeah. Is this one of the most surreal things you've ever done, Mr. Oh, de Havilland? It's definitely up there. <laughs> <laughs> Shoes. Boy at the Sadler's Wells production of shoes. Go on, then off you go. Oh, wait, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Zooming in on you. Oh, oh, it's in high definition. We can see everything. Oh, no. I shall oh, zoom out. Not my breakfast, not my chin. You may land tonight. I, I, don't tell your papa or he'll get us locked up in In the seventies, oh god, it was more who didn't I make shoes for? Sharon Bette Midler, Twiggy, Mary Halvin, Lulu, Brett Eklund, Yanka Jagger, Jackie O, Vivian Westwood, Angie and David Bowie, Tim Curry for the Rocky Horror Show, Zandra Rhodes, Rudolf Nuria. It's still going, isn't it? Yes. All those happy feet out there. Oh, yes. we love it, it's great. And recently, Kate Moss and Naomi Campbell, Sienna Miller, Amy Winer, Alison Goldfair, Helena Bonham Carter, Michelle Pfeiffer, Angelina Jolie, Saidi Frost, Elle McPherson, Erin O'Connor, Lizzie Jagger, Jay Jagger, Georgia May Jagger, Daisy Loper, Loma Faye. Leona Lewis, Chill Cole, Kate Nash. I, I have shot a lot. <laughs> My dad was making, he was making shoes for windmill girls towards the end of the war. And by then I was about six, seven. So there's all these gorgeous showgirls coming down from the windmill to our, to, to our gaff in the East End. And, um, What's not to like, you know? Ankle straps, it's still in my mind. I still do ankle straps. I cannot get away from it. It's the sexiest strap is an ankle strap. Got your mother in a world Cause she's not sure if you're a boy or a girl Hey babe, your hair's all right We actually did a boot for Shoe, the, the retailer. We put this little pocket on the side of the boot. First of all, we thought we'd be to keep your fear home, and then we found these disc condoms. <laughs> so we made it a safety boot. So each boot came with a condom. <laughs> I think that's one thing about your shoes, they're always, they're always witty. Put you down, say I'm wrong. Take your thing, put them on. Rebel, rebel, put on your dress. Getting down to the toes, so I've got to get down to the toes. <laughs> <laughs> But they're all pervert, At least you're not going to lace it all the way up to the thigh. Oh, I've done that. I've been there. I've done that. When I first saw this magazine, I was blown away. I thought it was fantastic styling. I thought the photographs were fantastic. I thought the shoes were to die for <laughs> until I read that they were by Sasha from Reddick instead of crediting me. I thought that was a piss take, to be honest with you. This is the Telegraph magazine. And imagine, and we opened it up and I saw the advert from Yumu. 
And voila, when I first saw that ad, it took me over five minutes to realize it wasn't actually my shoe, but a copy. If that's not a direct copy of that shoe, I'm a bloody Chinaman. It's crazy. No one does Terry de Havilland the way I do Terry de Havilland. Rebel, rebel, put on your dress. Rebel, rebel, your face is a mess. Rebel, rebel, how could they know? Hat trim, I love you so. No Fielding's got a pair of, of, of a Cuban heel boots, and on one foot we put f you, on the other foot we put f me. He said that all he has to remember is which foot he's got what on. <laughs> Can't get enough, but enough into test. You got a transmission in the live wire. You got your fuel line and a heck of a doozy. You're gonna be there when the camera... What can I say? I met Terry first in 1966 on my first ever acid trip. So it was quite momentous, to say the least. It was in Bell Street, just up the road from where um, John Lennon met um, Yoko Ono. I think I was the bunny girl at the time. Yeah, I was. So um, I was working at the Playboy Club. Anyway, we went on to have this long friendship that was just so special in fact so special uh, you know it's just like anything really you don't realize how special it was until you don't have it anymore and these last few weeks have been like that for me i've just you know thought about him thought about the experiences we had together the times we spent together the oh just just beautiful just beautiful i've never known such a a generous warm spirited human being as Terry um generous of spirit of material thing he would give you anything and he never judged and if if he wasn't like me who bitches like crazy and and you know gossips and blah 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 but you know a real he wasn't like that he if he if something didn't agree with him he would just turn away and move on um Beautiful qualities. I mean, a very, very special man. But then, you know, hold on. Let's talk about the shoes. Oh, my God. I would never have pulled so well in all those years during the 60s and the 70s without those shoes. Those shoes got me into more adventures than, than, I can, than any girl can have. What can I say? He was so special. So very special. And I get a lump in my throat when I when I, I when I get serious about thinking about him. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day celebrating his life. Um, I'll be with you in spirit. Um, I, I I hadn't realised how much he meant to me uh, until these last couple of weeks. Um, a truly gifted human being in so many ways, not just his talent. As, as a shoe designer, but in so many, many ways. Love you all, bless you, and love you, Terry. Bye, darling. Bye. What are you doing? What am I doing? <laughs> I'm trying to make lines relate. <laughs> <That's us. laughs> it's a bit like Einstein. <laughs> Einstein a go go. Einstein a go go, yeah. It, it's that. Uh, it's strange, I, I'm never quite sure what I'm doing. Today we say goodbye to a true character. To some, he was a renowned shoe designer, Terry de Havilland. To his partner, Liz, his muse. He was her soulmate and confidant. Hi. Oh, baby. You're taking a film, aren't you? And you look fab. There you go. You're absolutely fab. You are absolutely fucking fab. But to me and my brother Jason, he was our very eccentric, 
totally untraditional, completely bonkers dad. Dad is a very strange word for me, and I guess my brother is also slightly overwhelming. You see, our dad was never the traditional, stereotypical daddy. He was never there when we scraped our knee for the first time, who we went to when we needed help with our homework, and he never taught us how to shave. My dad, Terry, was larger than life, and I put it in a word that those who loved him would understand, and he was fabulous. Every person here today can share a story about my dad, but many of you would never know the insecurities that he lived his life with every day. At a young age, he watched his dad die in his shoe factory. He then took the role as family provider. In that time, he found the creative outlet in designing women's shoes, and boy, did he run with it. The rock and roll cobbler came of age, and in his words, I don't give a fuck what you all think. I don't follow fashion. I am fashion. He was a trailblazer in the fashion and lived life in the fast lane, reveling in and often creating madness, turning everybody onto the rock and roll lifestyle. He adopted the misfits, those who chose not to conform to society. He gave them homes, jobs, outlets for their passions, often at the detriment to himself. My wife Kat always talks about the famous orphan's Christmas party, where Daddy told her that Daddy was partying that night and every, everybody was coming with him. Two days later, he bowled through the door of the old pa's head with his leopard print shirt, leather pants, a Jean-Paul Gaultier medallion on, just to tell my son that I fucking love him. And he turned on his heel with him and bowled back out the door to continue the party. He struggled being at the top of the fashion world and then being totally fucked over by many that he trusted, including family. He was a stubborn fucker, and no matter how many times he was knocked down, he got back up and started all over again. It was always his way, and although it drove many of us mad, he always stayed true to himself. He loved women, but he only ever truly loved one, and that was Liz. Jeez. How she put up with him, I will never know. But she was his muse, and although he could be a right wanker at times, she was his world. He was also my world. He taught me my work ethic, to not pigeonhole people, and how to cook amazing meals, and he helped put me back together again when I lost my mum. Because of him, I have a brother, Jason, who looks just like him, and we also have five gorgeous grandbabies who all have just a little bit of his spark and passion in them. When Dad left us, a little bit of life that is reserved for the cheeky naughty went with him, but I promise that we will keep his spirit strong and make sure that the world continues to remember the real Terry de Havilland. Uh, I'll miss you, Dad. <laughs>